something to say. Hello everybody, how are you doing? My name is Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, and today is the day I finished oh, writing Sanctify My Sins. I, I, I'm very happy, and I realized we, we haven't talked about writing on the podcast in a while. So, yeah, let's do that. It's a topic I see a lot of people talking about. You know, I follow a lot of creativity blogs, and a lot of writing blogs, and a lot of writing YouTubers, and a lot of writing podcasts, and I am a member of the Alliance of Independent Authors. Did I get that right? Ally. The acronym is Ally. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, so I, I spend a lot of my time marinating in this world you know i listen to a lot of books about creativity i read a lot of books about creativity i spend way way too much time thinking about what it means to be creative in part i do that because you know i'm a writer and it's what i do and i'm fascinated by these strange images and characters that roam through my head that i chronicle in my stories and part of it's because i think it's fascinating. But the one thing that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, mainly because I think everyone, when they think about writing nowadays, thinks about how they're going to be the next J.K. Rowling, or how they're going to be the next Stephen King, or the next fill-in-the-blank big-time author. And so a lot of the writing advice that is out there is you know advice on how to perfect the craft or market your book or you know those kinds of things and there's a place for that and i indulge in a bit of that myself and i am a particular fan of like you know bad writing tropes and bad writing advice in general that's one of my favorite shows on youtube and i get excited every time he puts out a new video and sure enough we're going to have our own discussions on tropes and various techniques in writing and stuff as this podcast goes on, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about imagination in and of itself. And I think that that is problematic. Mainly because I see a lot of advice on how to get through writer's block and how to deal with writer's block. But I don't see a lot of questions as to where writer's block actually comes from. Now, I, I know that there are a lot of reasons that a person could have trouble coming up with story or characters, and I myself have had days where, you know, just sitting in front of my laptop looking at that blank page, the cursor blinking, I didn't know what to do, and then what happens? Stress. Stress sinks in. You know, that little chill in your stomach, that kind of tension in your neck and in your shoulders. No, I'm going to write. I'm going to write. And you start squinting at the screen. Oh, I'm going to write. I'm going to write. I'm going to write. I chant this in my head like a mantra. I'm going to write. I'm going to write. Aches and pains. Every little thing becomes so obvious. Every little... In comfort discomfort every little thing in the chair that could be bothersome is bothersome oh the pillow that i put on the arm of my chair so that it would hold my arm at the right angle so my corporal tunnel wouldn't act up no that's just not at the right angle let me spend 30 minutes messing with that i'm gonna write i'm gonna write i'm gonna write i'm gonna write and the spiral commences but i lost the battle before I ever entered the fray. And I can't say that this will work for everyone because I don't know any writing advice that is ubiquitous. I mean, there are a few things, you know, when we talk about grammar rules and 
you know, cliches that should probably be avoided and, you know, things like that, you know, can apply to most people. But when it comes to topics of creativity and how to write, that, that gets a little bit more dicey. See, for me, I've learned over the years that to think of myself kind of like a reservoir, and I often actually think of myself almost like an inkwell. There's so much creativity inside. And I can dip in and take some out. And as long as I keep the well full, I can keep drawing out ideas. I can keep drawing out stories. And that's how I wrote two books last year and one book this year. I wanted to write more this year, but I actually got distracted in things that had absolutely nothing to do with writing and let that become my block because, you know, I needed to get the business plan figured out and all of that and, eh, you know, stupid things. And so that became the lie that, well, I just have writer's block. I'm having a hard time writing because, you know, every time I loaded up my, loaded up Scrivener to write, I would be thinking about, well, how am I going to sell this? Well, it doesn't matter how I'm going to sell it. It's not written yet. I can't write it until it's, you know, I can't sell it till it's written. Oh, goodness. So much stress. And that's always the second thing that comes in, the stress. Writing shouldn't be stressful. Like, I get it. If you're working on a deadline, stress can come into it, you know. But if you're just writing, if you're just telling a story, if you're just creating art because you want to tell a story, there shouldn't be anything stressful about it. It's just you and the story, and you let it do whatever it does. Let it flow. But at least for me, as I've learned over the years, the most important thing is for me to keep that well topped off. And I, I recommend that you try to find out if you're like this, because I have talked to a couple writers who have had similar experiences after we hashed out different ways to talk about it, and that's actually where the idea of the inkwell comes from. But there are several things that help me, one of which is writing to music. So I, I spend way too much time, <laughs> like I do on everything, trying to pick out what music to listen to. And that's one of the reasons why I'm very excited about my, you know, Apple Music subscription, because, you know, I've used iTunes for a long time. They have my genius data and they allow you to create personalized stations. And I know a lot of places do, but they know everything that I like and they know the way that I've been listening to my music for almost ever you know i switched over to itunes fairly early in the digital music thing so i mean they they have records going way back they know what i like and so now i don't have to think about it i just you know start my personalized station and it starts playing music that i like it mixes in songs that i haven't heard before or haven't rated yet that it thinks that i will like and you know, I rate them as I go along, but that helps a lot. Finding new music helps out so much. You know, be that Aviva, who we've talked about on the podcast, or Nawaz, Nawaz, that we've talked talk about them on the podcast too. You know, I've recently started listening to The Pale Waves, and I'm really, really liking what I'm hearing there. And, you know, other artists, you know, I finding a new band and it doesn't matter how new they are like i don't care if this is their first album or their 10th album as long as they're new to me and i really like them there's a magic that occurs listening to how they construct a song and how they play their instruments and how they sing and the way they construct their lyrics and it's an amazing experience for me and it's something that helps to top off my experience of, you know, creativity. It helps inspire me to be more creative. So that's one thing that helps. I've also learned over the years what I can and cannot watch. Because there, I, I've, one of the strangest things is, 
if I'm writing a fantasy novel, watching fantasy movies often doesn't help. It's often counterproductive. And for a while, that seemed strange to me. And then I figured it out. I'm writing fantasy fiction because I want to indulge in a fantasy story. Well, if I'm watching a good fantasy movie, I've done that already. So my interest in constructing my own actually diminishes, whether I'm conscious of it or not. And so if I'm writing, whatever I'm writing, be it sci-fi or fantasy or whatever genre, I am very careful now what I allow myself to watch. Because I found that it does affect my own creativity. So double check that. That might have something to do with your own. You know, this time around, writing this book, one of the things that actually helped a lot is I listened to the audiobook for The Silmarillion quite a bit while writing this book. And it's a strange thing to even say that because this text is as far away from Tolkien or The Silmarillion as fantasy could be. It's not a traditional quest story. It's you know, it's a follow-up to Crucify, and for those of you who read Crucify My Love on Wattpad, you know what I'm talking about. That's a that's a strange story. It's a different kind of fantasy story, at least for me. I'm not saying that it's unique in the world of fantasy stories, and that no one else has ever written a story like it, because that would just be stupid and wrong. Because, <laughs> you know, I've, I've been doing this long enough. I mean, I remember when I first started writing, I thought, that I was writing these original stories and there was nothing like them. You know, I'm, oh, I was probably like nine, ten years old at this point writing these stories. And I had a teacher who found out that I liked to write and she asked if I could read, you know, she asked if she could read one of my stories. And so I gave her one of the stories and she came back the next day and she was like, that was, it was good. Um, you're really a big fan of David Eddings, aren't you? And I kind of blinked at her because I had never heard of David Eddings. And she's like, well, this sounds a lot like, you know, some of his work. And I, I was aghast because I was sure that I had created this world out of whole cloth and that I was this creative genius, you know. Everything is so, you know, superlative when you're that age. And I immediately, like when I got off out of school, ran down to the mall and picked up a David Eddings book. And I started reading it and my heart broke because his sentence style, the way he described magic, everything. It, it, yeah, I, I was I was writing a very pale imitation of David Eddings and I didn't even know who he was. So, yeah, that, that kind of broke me of the idea that I am original or that anybody's original because... You know, if you can imitate somebody's writing style without even knowing that they exist, yeah, yeah. You might happen onto an original, original idea, but don't, don't think that you have because there's somebody out there somewhere who's probably already written it. But, you know, try and work while working... Ask yourself, what will fill you up? Are there certain games that do it? Forex games help me relax and cause me a certain creative um, pleasure in playing, especially games that allow you to create your own custom factions. I really love doing that. Um, Brian and I have been playing a lot of the Endless games lately, kind of alternating back between Endless Space and Endless Legend. Really been grooving on Endless Space lately. It's a very fun game. But it's something that I've found over the years that really helps me be more creative. Whereas I like to play MMOs and we're currently, you know, still playing Final Fantasy XIV. Those don't help that much for me. And often they actually are counterproductive. So throughout the month of November, I didn't actually sign on much at all. Actually, I don't think I signed on at all to Final Fantasy 15. I know Brian signed up to my account because he, so he could send my attendance out on ventures to get crafting materials for him because he was getting caught up on his crafting while I was writing the book. But, you know, that's something that just doesn't help. And again, 
it's because that's a fantasy story. I'm writing a fantasy story. So participating in one kind of satiates that desire to write one. And that's such a big thing for me. And I don't know if it is for you, but I would highly recommend that you ask yourself the next time you have writer's block, how much media have you entertained that is in the same vein or genre as the story you're trying to write? And did that, could that have possibly had an effect on your creativity? Ask yourself. I'd be curious what your answers are. We're going to continue this topic, but first we have to break for a message from our sponsor. And we're back. Hi, everybody. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to talk to, to you about when it comes to creativity is something that I don't think is a very controversial statement. I think that there have actually been quite a few psychological studies that have borne this out to some degree, but don't think I'm relying on them. This is all my personal experience. So, you know, take everything that I say with a grain of salt. But one, one of the most important tools that I've ever discovered to boosting my creativity is boredom. Yeah, being bored, not having anything to do, watching a movie that you're not really enjoying but other people are, so you just watch it. You know, hanging out, waiting, waiting, waiting for people to come up. Because, you know, they said they were going to be here at 5 and it's 6, but they're going to be here. They're just that kind of person that shows up late. And because you used to be the kind of person that shows up late, you don't let yourself show up late anymore. So you're just going to sit and you're going to wait and wait and wait. Those moments are precious because when you, when your mind has nothing to focus on, when you have nothing to focus on, you will find weird random connections starting to be made between things in your head and who knows what will come out of it. Those moments of boredom are priceless because the only thing you have to entertain you is your creativity. And this is one of the reasons why I have to a certain degree backed off some of the games that I had on my phone. I, I'm still playing Soul Guard. I'm not going to lie about that. I still play that. But, you know, I don't play as much as I used to. And I actually encourage time when I don't have anything to do. In fact, often, I take my breaks out on the deck and I just kind of sit there. Sometimes I meditate and I do find that that is helpful to create a space for creativity to arise. But a lot of times I'll just sit and I'll listen to the birds and, you know, watch the leaves or watch the scary, scary spider blizzard that we had the other week because that should not have been. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, baby spiders, when they hatch, they need to get away. And so they'll climb up to a high spot. It's the end of uh, Charlotte's Web, right? They climb up to a high spot and they spin a web out and the web gets caught in the air and it flies them away. And a couple weeks ago, I looked out the window and it looked like it was snowing. And the dog looked out the window and she thought it was snowing. And she got really excited and she wanted to go out and play with the play in the snow. She loves to play in the snow. And I looked at the wall and it was like in the 70s outside and that's when I realized that wasn't snow those were spiders and we had to go into town so we went into town and we drove through the spider snow and the spider snow was continuing even in town and they were everywhere I mean they just filled the air it looked like it was snowing so next year this fall and next year is going to be fun for people who are arachnophobic like me so many spiders so many spiders but I tell you that story because it, it those were the days where I just sat and stared out the window quite a quite a bit because it was frightening watching what I knew were spiders wafting through the air in such numbers because 
you know, I got bit by a uh, very poisonous spider when I was a child, and I got a really bad infection in my leg, and it was thing, and I don't want to really relive it right now, I'm trying not to think about it. Um, but I, I, I'm rather arachnophobic. So I literally spent most of the day just staring, just staring. And because I've gotten better about my meditation practice, I wasn't really freaking out. I just stared and my mind wandered. And, you know, one of the <laughs> benefits that I got of that was the idea for uh, the book that I just finished and the next one that I'm going to write. Because I just stared out the window and watched the spiders fly by, which is this sentence I hope I don't ever have to say again about any other portion of my life. But yeah, allowing yourself to be bored, allowing yourself not to check social media or play a game on your phone or, you know, any of the mindless tasks that we fill up our time with so that we're not bored. They don't allow us to have the time for the most creative ideas to emerge because the necessity for them isn't there. And I get that it's kind of a cliche to say things like, you know, <clears throat> necessity is the mother of invention. But in this case, it's really true. You know, yeah, there are times when I'll hear a song lyric or I'll, you know, see something in a movie or read something in a book or see a painting or something that, you know, sparks an idea and I run off in that way. But most of my ideas, at least, come about when I'm not doing anything. This entire trilogy that I'm working on right now came about because I didn't have anything to do and I was just kind of sitting around and the song Crucify My Love by X Japan started playing in the back of my head. And I couldn't get it out, so I played the song. And I couldn't get it out. And it just wouldn't get out of my head. And I couldn't get it out of my head. And so I just kind of walked around the house muttering the words of the song as I did things. And it, I was like that for about a week. And then one night, I had a dream. And it was the basic idea for the books. The characters came to life. I mean, everything. I woke up and I wrote down as much as I could, as quickly as I could, so I wouldn't lose it. And that's where it came from. It, it was my mind filling space. Try it. <laughs> you might like it. And your mileage will vary with this or any other technique that anybody gives you and tells you that it will boost your creativity. And of course, mine probably seemed the most dubious, right? Allow yourself to be bored and be mindful what types of content you're consuming. Yeah, it does sound weird. Especially when, you know, so much advice is read and read and read and read and just fill yourself with the creativity of others. And yeah, that's hopeful. And I, I even find that helpful. I mean, there are times when I binge on the creative works of others. And I'm really looking forward to this weekend watching season two of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel because I'm kind of addicted to that show and I'm hoping the second season is, you know, close to as good as the first. I loved the first season of that show. I'm very excited about that. And yeah, that's one of the things that I will be doing this weekend is binging on the creativity of others. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not trying to say that there is. But I've just learned from my own creative practice that if I want to keep my ideas flowing and I want to keep them, you know, fascinating me, I need to control my own information diet. I need to be very mindful of what I'm taking in and how I'm processing it because I can easily talk myself out of a good idea. I... I do it all the time. One of the things that I've found myself thinking about a lot lately is watching shows that are kind of okay to just fine and thinking to myself, oh, if I were to, have, were to have done that, I would have done it this completely different way. 
And then I start, you know, asking myself, you know, is that something that I want? To, that might be a new story. That might be a new setting or a new, you know, series that I want to start. It might be something that I want to play with. I don't know. But if I don't let myself have those thoughts, I won't know. And that's kind of the biggest lesson that I hope you take away from this talk today. If you're wanting to do anything creative whatsoever, and you know, I do a lot of different things. I do a lot of artwork. I do a lot of, I write, I write poetry that no one shall ever see. Um, you know, I do a lot of, I do a lot of different creative things. Um, but if I don't let myself oh, have a place where that creativity can exist and grow and flourish, then it won't, you know? In a lot of ways, I feel that creativity has a lot in common with baking, and I love to bake breads. Um, if we don't leave a space, you know, for, for it, one, you won't do it, but two, so much of making, like I made pizza and I made it from scratch and I really like bready pan doughs. I know everybody likes the thin, crispy, I, I'm not into thin and crispy. I want, you know, thick pan pizza, like a bready, bready pizza. It's like one of my favorite things. And over the years, I have developed this recipe that I like for making pizza dough. And it's really simple and it's really easy. And it takes like an hour and a half to, to all in total come together. And then, you know, we hit the oven. But so much of making that dough and making that work is just letting it sit because it has to sit for one hour after it's initially made. And it's a gooey ball of crap. If it doesn't get that hour, it will never be a good pizza dough. It will be a bizarre and nasty cracker. And so after it sits for that hour, I beat it down. I actually knead it a bit more and roll it into a ball and let it sit again for another half hour. That second prove, see the first prove, it will double in size. That second prove, it will double in size again in just 30 minutes. And then it's ready to be stretched out into a pizza and put into the oven. But most of the time is that proving time. Most of the time is just it sitting with a warm, moist towel over it, letting the yeast do its magic. And without that magic time, it just won't be right. It just won't work. And so that's, you know, that works, at least from my experience of writing, so well. If not given the proper amount of time to leaven, to prove, to develop while being untouched and unharassed, my creativity and my imagination just doesn't work. This is something that I've learned about myself over time. It's been very helpful for me over the years, and I wanted to share because I'm hoping that it's something that'll be helpful for you. Because of all the things that I hear people talking about when they talk about, you know, boosting your creativity or fighting writer's block, these are not on the list. So maybe I'm the only one that they help. I, I tend not to think so. I don't think anyone is generally speaking that special that they have that one thing that helps them that won't help at least one other person. So if you try this and it does work for you, let me know. I would love to hear about it. And I would love to see your stories if you're a writer. Definitely share those with me too. But yeah, that, that, that's, that's the trick. I'm, I let myself be bored and I am very careful about what I write, what I experience while I'm writing. Yeah. All right. So thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed the show. We have a lot of new listeners and I want to say hi. If you like this show and you think, you know, some other people that will like it, please share it. That really does help out a lot. If the app that you're listening to me in allows you to rate either this episode or the podcast, please do that. That tells the algorithm that I should be shared 
and that does help out so much. Okay? Um, if you want to follow me on social media, you can go to projectshadow.com and you can find a link to all my social media right there. Um, I'm C.E. Dorset on Twitter. That's the easiest place to find me because it's the place that I'm most active. Um, even when, like today, I'm lurking because I still read Twitter even when I'm not very vocal there. Um, so yeah. If you would like to leave me a voice message, all you have to do is download the Anchor app at anchor.fm and once you've downloaded it, follow me on Project Shadow and then you can click the button that says voice message and you leave me a one minute message and it can be a comment, it can be a suggestion, it can be a topic that you think I, I should talk about, whatever. Then you leave me a message, keep it clean, and if it's good, I'll use it on the show. I've actually done quite a few episodes just based on those feedback messages that you've left, so I can't wait to see what comes of that. All right, um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I'm going to play around with the format for the podcast next week. Nothing radical. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing with the segment one and the segment two, but I don't know. I have some ideas I'm going to kind of work on over the weekend and see what comes of them. So the show may be a little bit different next week and hopefully a bit better. We'll see. <laughs> As with any change. Until then. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the thing that Brian will slap me in the face for. If not, not literally. Just, that's a joke. Anyway, um, if you have a buck that you can throw my way, depending on the app that you're listening to me on, there will either be a button that says support or in the show notes, there'll be a link that says um, support on Anchor. If you click that, you can donate at the $1, $5, $10 a month level. That really does help me out a lot in getting everything done that I do throughout the day and throughout the week. And most of all, it helps me get to the very to conventions because I want to add more conventions to the schedule than the one than what I do now. But they're not cheap and they require travel time and, you know, all that. So if you can help, please do. If not, you know, if you can't afford to help, just please share the podcast and help it to grow. That 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 helps out a lot. If you like support everything I do, including my writing, you can head over to patreon.com slash the edorset and support sign up over there. Whichever platform floats your boat, either would be great. And anyway, thank you for listening. I've ho I hope you I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, have the fun. Bye.